Hello, I am Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University, and this is episode 32 of How to Survive EVE Online. <laughs> uh, I am, let's get finish up the last step of the military chain. Right-click Seville Aeron, start conversation. And he wants us to find Wolf and kill him. And when we accept the mission, the agent is going to give us a Tristan-class Galente frigate to use for the mission. Let's strip all of the combat modules off of our Atron for a moment. Though we're not going to be using all the same equipment, let's move the antimatter charges. Right-click the Tristan, assemble ship, right-click it again, make active. Uh, I did not need to close the fitting window, but let me right-click again, change the name, just Tristan, and let's slap on some equipment onto here. Hold on, let me make this a little bigger so I can see what I'm doing. We are going to need a small armor repair, the afterburner. Uh, we're going to need another cap recharger, so view market details. And let's just buy the cheapest cap recharger in station. Close the market. Let's throw on both cap rechargers. Right click the hangar, sort by type. And let's see, was there anything else? Ah, yes. I want to get some new weapons for this thing. Notice that this has four high slots, two turret hardpoints, and two missile launcher hardpoints. So, first things first, go to the market, type in standard launcher, push, I got that wrong. Let me go to browse, ship equipment, turrets and bays, missile launchers, standard launchers, here we go, standard missile launcher I. And let's... Alright. I don't see any in station. I'm going to have to do some shopping myself. Some of these can be obtained in Luce. So I will buy a couple of these. But I'll have to travel out to Luce 6 Moon 1 to get them. Go back to search. Let's go to... Blood Claw Light Missile. Left click on that. Let's buy some of these in station and get a thousand of those and click buy. I want to use a longer range railgun this time, so let's type in 125mm railgun I. Left click and we've got... yeah, we've got some here in station. I will buy a couple of these. Let's get a micro Auxiliary, Micro Auxiliary Power Core 1. This one is a little bit more expensive. Uh, your wallet should be able to handle it. I'm up to 2.2 million. This is only 0 0.2 million. So I'm going to buy one of these. You're going to need this for a little extra power grid space. You're going to need a capacitor power relay. Get a power capacitor power relay I. Let me double check. Yeah, energy grid upgrade is level 2. Buy the cheapest in station. Let's throw on the micro auxiliary power core, the capacitor power relay. Uh, let me make this window smaller again. Let me open the cargo hold. Alright, let me put my cargo holds in the same spot on my screen. Alright. Uh, let me put the rail guns into place here. My drag in the blood claw. Oh, one last thing I forgot. Market lead charge S. Left click that. And I'm going to have to go pick those up in Luce. So I will right click that entry, one jump out, buy 2,000 rounds. Okay. All right. Time for me to go pick up that stuff. I'm going to skip ahead to that point in the video. I fast forwarded to a point in the video where I finished gathering up all the stuff on that shopping list I just recited off to you. And the reason I gave you a shopping list like that is because I want to take a more proactive approach in fitting the ship that I'm using. Uh, previously, we've been largely just using the ships and equipment that the tutorial agents have been giving us along the way. 
but once you're out of the tutorial missions, you should probably make it a point to look into researching ships, skills, fittings, and whatnot, and purchasing these on your own from the market. Now, for the particular weapons that I'm using, uh, I want to make use of all of the hard points on a Tristan. So, two turrets, two missile launchers. I can't put four turrets on this thing because it doesn't have four turret hard points. We also want our weapons to be roughly matched in their ranges. If you look at this, I've got standard missile launcher one loaded with blood claw light missiles. Show info on the missiles, and they've got a max flight time of 5 seconds and a max velocity of 3,750 meters per second. Do the math, and they're pretty effective out to about 18 kilometers. The 125mm railguns are have longer range than the 75mm we've been using. It's going to fall off of 5 kilometers and an optimal of 9 kilometers, and I'm using lead charges rather than antimatter. So, lead doesn't change the optimal range of the guns. If I were using antimatter, it'd be at a fall off of 5 kilometers and an optimal of 4.5. But with this setup, I'm effective to about 14 kilometers on the guns, 18 kilometers on the missiles. I've got the afterburner, I've got the armor repair, I've got the cap rechargers and capacitor power relay to help with my cap regeneration. I still can't run everything all at once all the time, but I can run them longer before I have to turn them off because of the capacitor. Let me close the fitting window. I am currently docked in Luce 6 Moon 1 Federation Customs Assembly Plant because under with the current market orders in Verge Vendor as I'm filming this, whatever I couldn't get in Klalanon, I was able to get one jump out in Luce. And as it turns out, the mission happens to be located here in Luce. So, right click empty space, cash flow for capsuleers, encounter dead space, warp to location. You may also notice that I grouped my weapons. Again, the way you group weapons is that while the modules are empty, you shift, click, and drag one module onto the other. They have to be identical. Uh, the way I have this laid out right now, F1 will fire my guns, F3 will fire my missiles. Here is the acceleration gate, left click the gate, and let's go in. By the way, I believe three pockets are involved in this mission. So this is going to be the first of three acceleration gates that I'm going to have to jump through in order, and I think the second and third are guarded. So if I might be clipping out pieces of the combat in between, so if I'm suddenly jumping a, uh, ahead discontinuously from one pocket to the next, that's why I cut out those pieces of the video. Let's lock things up. And yep, the gate is guarded. Let's see how effective these missiles are. Reasonably effective. Control spacebar to stop. I keep trying to hit F2 to activate my missiles beside... You know what? Let me drag the missiles over to the F2 slot. That way I'm not going to have... I guess I can't do that while they're still cycling. Let me drag this over now. Now I won't have that problem. I'm going to bookmark one of these wrecks. And approach the spy a little bit. Fire a missile. Two missiles, actually. Alright, one more volley should kill that one off. By the way, I forgot to check the tracking speed on my gun. 0 0.107 radians per second. So that's the number I have to keep in mind when looking at the angular velocities. Alright, these guys are all dead. Jump the gate. Warp drive active. 
Okay, unlike the last time I filled this series, I actually remembered to bring extra ammo, so control R to reload the weapons. Alright, I'm gonna approach them with afterburner on. in here. For some reason, the missile launchers play an extra missile launch sound at the end of a cycle, even if you're not cycling them again immediately. Spreading out my damage a little bit because I don't want to go wasting ammunition. Sometimes you don't care, sometimes the ammunition is cheap, like these missiles and such. Control space for stop. By the way, if you right-click your Tristan and show info, read the description. It's got bonuses to small hybrid turret damage and small hybrid turret tracking speed. So the bonuses on your Galente frigate only help your guns, not your missiles. All right, let's lock up things. Now that stasis tower is webifying me, so if I want to try to move, my options in that regard are limited. I'm only pushing about 80 meters per second right now. And that stolen Navy ship can control the range, and therefore the angular velocity. Uh, time for me to hit the armor repair. Let me lock up Wolf's outpost, since that's actually where the objective will be contained. And the stasis tower by itself is not a threat. Of course, you could destroy it first if you want to. That also works. And apparently destroying the outpost also destroys the stasis tower because it's scripted that way. I'm going to bookmark one of the wrecks. There's Wolf. Let's send some missiles in his face. And some hybrid charges. I want to see what's in this cargo container. All right, grab the loot, and the mission is complete. I'm going to head back to Kalalan. Warp drive. Active. You know what? Let me hit the armor repair again. Oh, that didn't quite finish the job. I'm um, just a hit point short. And I will skip ahead to the point where I dock up in Kalalan. All right, I am docked back up in Clelon. I'm going to right-click, start conversation, complete the mission. He gives you a skill book. Right-click the sharpshooter skill book. Train now to level one, and that finishes the military chain. Actually, in the next episode, we'll get started on the exploration chain. And in the meantime, thank you for watching.